There has been a terrible mix-up in deciphering the name of a prophet in the Quran by Islamic scholars. That prophet's name is Idris, peace be upon him. If you have been following my series Quran for Non-Muslims, you know the Quran, the Muslim religious book, is in continuity of the Bible in a certain way and therefore contains many names and stories of biblical prophets. But the names used for those biblical prophets are Arabicized versions of their biblical names, not their original Hebrew names. Converting names into different languages by making suitable character changes, especially in translations of the Bible, is a largely common and unremarkable practice. Hence, Hebrew names were converted into Greek and Latin like, for instance, we say Moses and Jesus and not Moshe and Yeshua is because of this practice. Just like that, since Quran's original language is Arabic, Arabicized versions of the names were used. For example, Moses is Musa in the Quran, Jesus is Isa, John the Baptist is Yahya, so on and so forth. But the prophet Idris is one name that has remained a mystery to the scholars. Don't get me wrong, some Islamic scholars do generally attribute this name to a particular biblical figure, namely Enoch, who lived prior to Noah's flood. But not only is there no consensus on this attribution, the reasons for this attribution are also extremely thin and debatable. Since there is such a huge visible difference between the word Enoch and Idris, and there is very little to go on in the mere two sentences and a name drop in the Quran concerning him, that there is every reason to doubt this attribution. Let me just go into a little bit of detail of how the Arabicized version of the names used in the Quran came about to show you who Idris really is. The forms of the names of biblical prophets used in the Quran are simply the forms that were in currency in the Arabian Peninsula at the time of the revelation of the Quran. Because Quran uses names that the intended audience is already familiar with. And Arabs knew these names despite being non recipients of any book from God because they cohabited with Jews among them in their cities and villages, and also because the Arabs were themselves progeny of Ishmael, the elder son of the biblical prophet and patriarch Abraham, peace be upon him. While they might not be familiar with the detailed histories of the biblical prophets, their names were well known in their society. Now, we know that the Old Testament in the Bible was originally revealed in Hebrew, but the Hebrew Bible did not exist at or before the revelation of the Quran for hundreds of years. The authoritative Bible available back then was the Greek Bible, that is the Septuagint. And we know that just like Rabbicized versions of the biblical prophets are different from the Hebrew originals, the Hellenized versions of the names were also different. So any prophet's Arabicized name in currency at the time could have been an Arabicized version of either the Hebrew or the Greek names. While the Latin Bible had also been transcribed around two centuries prior to Quran's revelation, Latin's influence is quite improbable for multiple reasons. We'll leave that for now. Hence, it is quite reasonable to assume that the final Arabicized form of any name used in the Quran was either influenced by the Hebrew original or the Hellenized Greek. We can easily see examples of both in the Quran. For instance, the Hebrew name is Moshe, whereas the Greek form is Moses. The name used in the Quran is Musa which clearly seems more influenced by Hebrew than Greek. Similarly, his brother Aaron in Greek is named Arun, whereas in Hebrew it is Aharun, which in the Quran became Harun. Again, clearly more influenced by Hebrew than Greek. Likewise, there are Greek-influenced named names as well. For instance, the prophet Elijah in Hebrew is Eliyahu, but in Greek Bible it is Elias which in the Quran becomes Ilyas. Similarly, Jonah in Hebrew is Yona, which in Greek is Yonas, and in the Quran it is Yunus, which also is clearly more influenced by Greek than Hebrew. The S in the end of names 
which represents a masculine name in Greek, is usually a dead giveaway of a Greek lineage. Now, by considering these two tributaries, that is Hebrew or Greek, we can find out which person the name Idris points to. We find no similar or remotely similar name in the Hebrew Bible, but in the Greek Bible, there seems to be a clear winner. That person in the Greek Bible is named Esdras, which is a Greco-Latin variation of the Hebrew name Ezra. It is such a famous name of Ezra the scribe from the Bible that there are multiple books with different numbering uh, schemes ranging from one Esdras to four Esdras in different versions of the Bible attributed to him. He is considered the second Moses because he restored the law of Moses after the Babylonian exile, led them back from captivity, and established many practices of Judaism practiced to this day. His Greek version of the name, Esdras, has a striking resemblance with Idris, with only the first S having been dropped. And it has the iconic S ending retained in both Greek and Arabic. It fits in with the pattern of all names adopted from the Greek versions instead of the Hebrew ones. And is a much better fit than Enoch that shared not even a single character between both names. And is quite an obscure figure from the Bible and only finds any considerable mention in Apocrypha. Moreover, Esdras had such a major influence on Judaism that it would seem surprising to not have been mentioned in the Quran in the context of praise or admiration. Because if not for these two verses, there is no place in the Quran where Esdras could be considered mentioned in the context of praise. However, anyone well versed with the Quran would immediately raise a red flag on this newly drawn concordance. Because there is a figure mentioned in Quran 930 by the name of Odair that Muslims already consider to be the prophet Ezra. So what do I have to say about that? Well, I say Odair is not Ezra. And as part of the reason, I called it a terrible mix-up in the start of this video. Because considering Odair as Ezra solves nothing and actually raises another problem that has remained unsolved for Muslims to this day. But let me discuss that in a separate video. The takeaway from this video is Idris is Estras, that is Ezra the scribe, peace be upon him.